but the book that I chose um, is Weather by Jenny Offill. And, you know, climate fiction books tend to be, you know, kind of about the environment, about climate change. Um, they can branch into things like global pandemics, though, frankly, nobody wants to read about global pandemic <laughs> at the moment. Um, but, you know, they can, so they can take place in a world we know, or they can take place, you know, kind of in a speculative future in which things have usually gone horribly awry, right? Um, I know you read a lot uh, in this genre. Um, I'm a relative newcomer. You know, I've read books like Station Eleven, uh, The Stand, uh, The Passage by Justin Cronin. So anyway, like I said, I chose Weather by Jenny um, Otho um, on your recommendation. So I can tell you, so it's a book about a young woman named Lizzie Benson. Uh, she lives in Brooklyn. She has a husband and a son. She has a job as a librarian at a college library. Uh, she does a side gig for her old mentor, answering email generated from a radio show about climate change. And she has a brother who's a recovering addict who she worries about a lot. But otherwise, I mean, this book is kind of hard to describe, right? It's told in, in fragments. It's told in fragments of Lizzie's life uh, and her thoughts. And it's set kind of amongst kind of the every, everyday task of living your life. Um, but underlying all of that kind of is this worry about climate change, uh, which is more and more upon us. You know, this book is set uh, in very contemporary times. So, you know, over the course of the novel, you know, her worry only increases about the current world and the world that she's leaving for her son. Um, she worries, you know, what can one person do in the face of such a huge problem? Um, and as we kind of see her rising anxiety, you know, we wonder along with her, like, you know, how do we balance of intellectually and emotionally, like living our lives amidst, you know, such a large and seemingly impossible issue is, is climate change. Um, a New York Times review uh, kind of gave a, a better description of kind of what she's attempting here. Um, they said, the scale of its ambition, despite its brevity, is its attempt to tell a story about climate change that carries the same visceral force as our own private emotional dramas that is, in fact, inseparable from them. Um, so, you know, it's the type of book that, that benefits from thinking about it after you finish it. You know, it's a, it's a quick read. And so sometimes when you read something quickly, you, you equate that with a lightweight read. But, you know, that is really far from the truth here. Um, in the end, you know, there's a lot, there's a message, you know, of, of mindfulness, you know, of activism. You know, um, one of my favorite things was that her, her husband, Lizzie's husband, Ben, he's posted a reminder above his desk. You are not a disinterested bystander. Exert yourself. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it sounds it sounds a little bleak. Is that is that the case? Well, you know, I thought so too at first, but you know, as I was thinking about it, you know, and I was thinking about you know, kind of this message of mindfulness and activism. You know, I think it's really like highly relatable for the times that we are living in. You know, Lizzie is just an ordinary woman. You know, trying to live her life. You know, but worrying about you know, the impact of things on the wider world. And I think that's a feeling like we can all understand. Um, you know, and there's an overall message of hope in the story. You know, she says, the core delusion is that I am here and you are there. You know, so in other words, you know, we are, we are not alone in this. We are in it together. We're in it together, exactly. Great. Uh, and so besides climate, people who already like climate fiction, like myself, who might pick this up, um, who else might like this story? Yeah, I think, you know, if you've read any climate fiction, you would definitely get a lot out of the story. Um, as for other books and authors, if you like literary fiction, just in general, I think that you would really appreciate, you know, the style and format of this book and just in general of, of Offil's writing. Um, if you like authors like I don't know, Elizabeth Strout, uh, Ann Tyler, Marilyn Robinson, I think that you would really appreciate Jenny Offel.